Um, today, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, talk about the, uh, uh, China's uh, institutional process uh, from a historical and uh, theoretical uh, perspective. I understand that uh, you have uh, distributions of uh, uh, <coughs> reprints of uh, uh, this uh, PowerPoint. I made a, a little bit of uh, a final uh, minor adjustments, but uh, uh, basic information is uh, uh, on uh, handouts. And the first, uh, this um, uh, <coughs> table um, provides you uh, some uh, basic sort of uh, factual uh, uh, background uh, landscape of uh, uh, China's economic development uh, uh, from uh, 1820 through uh, uh, 2011. And these uh, figures are derived from uh, basically uh, uh, <clears throat> often uh, uh, cited uh, estimates by uh, uh, Madison. Uh, some of his estimates is uh, uh, becoming a controversial uh, these days. And so, uh, uh, and also, uh, he uh, deceased uh, a couple of years ago. So, um, uh, his uh, uh, long-term kind of historical studies uh, ended in. Uh, 2001, so um, uh, some of the uh, uh, data is uh, supplemented by uh, uh, official statistics and uh, uh, World Bank statistics and uh, also some of the uh, estimate by uh, uh, Roski. And uh, without uh, going into the details of uh, these uh, figures, just uh, look at this uh, share in world GDP. Uh, all these uh, numbers are uh, in terms of um, purchasing power uh, <coughs> parties. And then uh, if you look at these uh, 1820s, the um, China's GDP share in the world products is uh, uh, almost one third, uh, uh, without any doubt, the largest sort of uh, uh, economy uh, uh, in the world. And then uh, 1950s, when the China started the uh, uh, new, uh, <clears throat> uh, new start under the uh, communist regimes, uh, this uh, share uh, went down to 4.5%. Uh, uh, and then after this, uh, particularly after 1980s, the uh, uh, economy has been growing, as you know. So now, according to this uh, uh, World Bank statistics, uh, uh, now, China's share is uh, uh, 14 uh, percent. And then uh, uh, another interesting uh, kind of uh, uh, information is a uh, uh, ratio of a per capita GDP uh, between China and Japan. And uh, in terms of a per capita uh, GDP, uh, in the uh, 1820s, the Japan's per capita income slightly uh, over uh, uh, China. But then, uh, after uh, Meiji restorations, uh, Japan has grown, and uh, particularly after uh, Second World War, they experienced a uh, uh, high uh, growth period. And while the uh, China's economic uh, uh, development in terms of uh, per capita uh, stagnates, so uh, uh, when China started uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> open and uh, uh, reform policies, uh, uh, China's, uh, uh, the share, uh, uh, China's uh, um, per capita income is about 80% of uh, uh, Japan's. But now uh, it has grown, and now uh, about a quarter of uh, um, Japan's uh, uh, GDP per capita is the one which now uh, China has uh, achieved. So from this uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> interesting question is uh, why China's uh, this, uh, development uh, became so late, but then uh, why uh, it became uh, so fast in the uh, last uh, 20 years, and whether uh, this uh, fast the, uh, uh, growth of China is uh, going to uh, still continue or not. This is a, a kind of a, a question so which I, I'd like to uh, uh, address. And for this, uh, there are various uh, uh, economic and the social science or the political interpretations about this uh, uh, developmental uh, process. And first, the uh, 
uh, <coughs> to understand this kind of dynamics uh, in terms of uh, uh, development stage uh, differences. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, the uh, economic historian um, Simon Kuznets, uh, who gets Nobel Prize, uh, second Nobel Prize, uh, uh, used to uh, <coughs> Uh, process a lot of uh, uh, macroeconomic and demographic uh, uh, information uh, across the countries, uh, uh, except for uh, China. And then, uh, as you know, uh, uh, he uh, <coughs> uh, uh, derived that there is a very strong correlation uh, between uh, uh, per capita uh, income growth and the uh, reductions of uh, uh, agricultural employment. So uh, he argued that the exits from uh, agricultural, agricultural employment is a, a sort of a, a quantitative uh, aspect of uh, uh, development. And if you look at these uh, figures, the, uh, on the vertical axis, uh, I take the uh, agricultural uh, employment share. And the horizontal axis, uh, I take the per capita income in terms of uh, purchasing power parities uh, in terms of uh, 2008 uh, US uh, dollars. And then this is a, a trajectory which Japan uh, has experienced from, uh, uh, let's say, uh, here, Japan here, the 1950s, and 55 here, and then uh, go like this. And the Korea started uh, here in 1963, and uh, 1963 still uh, uh, employment share of agriculture is uh, more than 60 percent, but then it falls uh, almost the same path as uh, uh, Japan up to uh, uh, 2008. Here that in China, uh, this is uh, the positions of uh, China in 80s. And then uh, here that I divided the uh, uh, statistics uh, between uh, coastal area and uh, also inland area. So uh, uh, now China's position in uh, uh, 2008 is uh, uh, somewhere here, which corresponds to uh, uh, Japan's positions between the 60s and 70s. I would guess that if you take uh, statistics of uh, uh, 2012, uh, probably uh, uh, already uh, uh, China's coastal area may be uh, uh, somewhere uh, around here. So uh, uh, <coughs> this development has stage difference kind of interpretations is also uh, uh, <coughs> related to uh, uh, famous unlimited labor supply theory of uh, uh, Arthur Lewis, um, <coughs> China's uh, first uh, economic development is uh, uh, made facilitated by uh, uh, unlimited uh, uh, labor supply of uh, uh, very low uh, substance level uh, wages. Uh, th this is a uh, uh, kind of uh, a very popular uh, theory among uh, uh, Chinese economists, and uh, uh, <coughs> now a uh, uh, heated uh, debate in China is uh, whether this uh, um, the uh, uh, Luijiang kind of a process uh, come to uh, end uh, or not. And also uh, in uh, economic growth theory, as you know, uh, like uh, Hansen and Prescott's uh, and also uh, uh, Garoa, uh, who wrote massive the, uh, uh, macroeconomic book called uh, uh, Unified Approach to Growth, the, uh, uh, they try to uh, understand uh, the uh, growth process uh, uh, together with uh, the uh, demographic uh, uh, va variables. So uh, this is why uh, their approach is uh, called uh, the uh, Unified Approach to Growth, but uh, uh, usually uh, the uh, period of a very high uh, growth uh, can be uh, very often uh, the, uh, associated with the uh, uh, exit of uh, agriculture employment. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, em em employment. Here, the, this is a, a statistic, uh, uh, Japan, and here is a Korea and China. And I decomposed the uh, uh <coughs> level of uh, uh, per capita income growth into uh, various sources. And here, uh, I just, uh, uh, I'd like you to uh, uh, focus upon uh, this uh, black part, which is uh, uh, contributions of uh, uh, productivity increase here, 
uh, due to uh, uh, migrations of uh, uh, agriculture workers to uh, uh, industrial uh, sectors. And usually uh, uh, when the uh, economy uh, is uh, developing very fast, uh, usually uh, uh, per, uh, worker output uh, of uh, manufacturing and the urban sector is uh, uh, three to five times as high as uh, uh, agriculture uh, labor productivity. So uh, as uh, people move from agriculture to uh, uh, <coughs> uh, urban uh, manufacturing or service sectors, uh, the, uh, that period, the uh, uh, very high economic development is uh, going to be uh, uh, realized. Well, this is one of the uh, interpretations. And there, uh, which is the, uh, the one which is related to uh, uh, also great divergence, the uh, question is, uh, uh, if that is the case, uh, why are this um, um, shift of uh, agricultural employment to the uh, industrial sector uh, lagged behind in Asia in comparison to the West? And um, although uh, the uh, uh, national income uh, per capita income level of uh, uh, China, uh, Japan, and uh, India was uh, almost the same as those of uh, uh, Western Europe, but why the uh, uh, industrial revolution occurred uh, in the West first. This is a, a very famous uh, now uh, controversy among the economic historians uh, regarding uh, uh, great divergence. And thirdly, um, here is a uh, <coughs> uh, as you know, uh, uh, <coughs> the, uh, when um, per capita income uh, reach a level of uh, more than uh, 10,000 uh, US dollars, and then uh, unless the, uh, there's another kind of uh, economic structure reforms, the uh, uh, economic growth may uh, stagnate. This is a, a kind of a phenomenon which is referred to a uh, uh, mid-income trap, uh, particularly a uh, development uh, economist at the World Bank and so forth. So uh, one of the interesting uh, kind of debate uh, within the circle of uh, uh, development economists is uh, whether the uh, China can escape from uh, uh, middle-income uh, uh, trap or not. And uh, last month, the, uh, at the uh, uh, economic forum, uh, which was uh, uh, every year sponsored by uh, Chinese the, uh, Development uh, uh, Research Center, uh, which is uh, under the State Council, one uh, researcher from CDR uh, made a report that China is uh, going to take over the U.S. Uh, by uh, uh, gross national product by uh, uh, 2016. So uh, there is some uh, controversy about the, uh, uh, about the future of uh, uh, the uh, Chinese economies. And actually, uh, there's uh, four, uh, four um, institutional matters here why uh, China's uh, uh, economic development first stagnate and then uh, uh, quickly uh, take over and so forth. And uh, <clears throat> recently, uh, um, MIT uh, economist uh, Ace Mogul and uh, uh, Harvard historian uh, Robinson uh, <clears throat> wrote a very influential book called uh, Why Nation Fails uh, last year. And in that book, they introduced the, uh, the following notions. Uh, uh, namely extractive uh, political institutions and the inclusive uh, political institutions. Extractive uh, institutions is the one where the rather small uh, elites uh, centralize the uh, political power and they use uh, this uh, political power to uh, uh, derive the uh, uh, economic gains for uh, their private uh, purpose at the sacrifice of uh, uh, welfare of uh, uh, general uh, public, whereas uh, inclusive uh, political institutions is a uh, more open uh, political uh, institutions. 